As an interior designer, I'm always inspired by everything that my eyes see and my ears hear. And travel is probably my biggest form of inspiration. I love traveling because it opens up my eyes to new things, gives me an entirely new perspective, and frankly, I take a lot of those ideas and bring them back and turn them into design projects. So now, I'm gonna take you along and let you see the world through my design eye. And this is a beautiful trip. I'm John McLean. I'm an interior designer and I want to take you along with me on my travels. Today I'm in Key West, Florida and I will tell you Key West is one of my most favorite cities in the country. It is so relaxing. It is so tropical. Key West is the southernmost city in the United States, meaning that it's a city in Florida, of course, but it's on an island. And honestly, if you ever have time to drive down from Miami to Key West, I think you'll enjoy that ride too because it's such a beautiful, beautiful drive right through the middle of the ocean. Key West is a city rich in history. Writers, artists, poets, and even presidents have fallen in love with this tropical paradise over the years. And I have been traveling here myself for over 10 years now. Now, don't get me wrong, I adore the tropical atmosphere, the food, and yes, well, the cocktails. But I also find some new design inspiration every time I come. It is a city full of inspiration, it's a city full of history, and it's a city full of chickens, you'll see that. But I'm gonna take you and show you some of my favorite historic homes on the island of Key West. So I'm walking up to the Donkey Milk House sounds like a terrifying name I know but it's really a family home it's been here for a long time in Key West I believe 120 years and yeah 1866 actually more than that but it's not really about the house and who lived here it's about what you're gonna see in the front yard right there behind me let me tell you the donkey milk house gets its name from the alley in the back where milkmen would fill up their donkey carts with containers of cow's milk and head out to make deliveries around the city this was the home of U.S. Marshal Peter Williams and his family for over 120 years. Though it's no longer owned by the Williams family and it's now a private residence, it currently doesn't offer tours, though there have been tours in the past. Since we can see the exterior of the 10-room home, I want you to take note of this tropical version of classical revival architecture. But right away, you will also notice the monstrous terracotta pot in front called a Tina Hone. Say it with me, Tina Home. <laughs> this gigantic pot was brought to Key West via a sailing schooner from Cuba to catch rainwater. And it has been sitting in front of the house for, get this, over 100 years now. I will be sure and let you guys know if the current owner decides to reopen for tours anytime in the future. And bike riding is my favorite way to get around Key West. One of my favorite places in Key West to come to is the Customs House. I think this house is just so beautiful. It's actually where people got their customs paperwork. But if you look at the house, you can see just how magnificent it is. It really grabs your attention the minute you walk by. It's really close to Mallory Square. It's now a museum and it houses a lot of the artifacts of Key West from that time, but I encourage you to go by and look at it, at least on the outside, because it's truly beautiful. The Key West Custom House is a great example of Richardsonian Romanesque style architecture and originally housed Key West's customs offices, district court, and post office. In 1993, historic renovations began on the building and what had originally cost less than $110,000 to build in four years cost almost $9 million to renovate over nine years. The good news is that the restoration followed historical preservation guidelines and used original construction materials. And now the Key West Custom House is one of the most significant historical buildings in the entire Florida Keys. 
So even if you don't go into the Customs House, they have lots of benches on the front porch. And here's a little tip. They leave the front doors open usually, and so the air conditioning is blasting out from the inside to the front porch. I can feel it on this bench. Free air conditioning in the middle of summer? Yep, I'll take it. This really easy for you. Right behind me you'll see the customs house which we just left and the sweat pouring down my face. <laughs> right across the street from the customs house is actually the Audubon house. This house is really really cool for a lot of reasons. Number one, it's just a beautiful historic home but number two, it was slated for demolition actually in the 1950s and it was saved from demolition and actually that sparked the restoration movement here in Key West. So I think this house may have single-handedly kept a lot of the historic homes in Key West from destruction and I think in a world where we're tearing down everything and building mega mansions and big high-rise buildings I think that's a beautiful thing. The construction of the Audubon House occurred between the years 1846 and 1849 by Captain John Hewling Geiger after a hurricane destroyed many of the homes on the island. A model of quality workmanship, the entire wooden structure was constructed with mortise and tenon joints. The wooden frame of the house and the floors are of Dade County Pine, a now extinct hardwood that is almost impervious to termites, which in Florida is a big, big deal. In 1958, the house was slated for demolition to make way for a gas station, but the Wolfson family stepped in to purchase and restore the dilapidated home. The Audubon House Museum opened in 1960, commemorating John Audubon's 1832 visit to Key West. In the gardens, orchids, bromeliads, lush tropical foliage, an herb garden, and an 1840s style nursery span an entire acre and are believed to have inspired the delicate flowers found in Audubon's drawings. And sometimes you have to push the bicycle because you're going the wrong way on a street. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm pushing my bike <laughs> because it's a one-way street for the bicycle. I'm a bike pusher. So of course a lot of the people who made Key West famous are well dead, but there is a way that you can see them in the middle of Mallory Square. Here we are. The Key West Historic Memorial Sculpture Garden opened in 1997 and features 36 beautifully cast bronze busts of the men and women who have had the greatest impact on Key West, from Ernest Hemingway to Harry Truman. So what I love about the Key West Sculpture Garden is that it is this really beautiful place that pays homage to the people who made Key West what it is today. Some famous names, some not so famous names, some of them you're going to know, some you're probably going to know from the street names in town because they've named a lot of streets after the people who made Key West. But it's this great place to really play tribute to the people who made Key West what it is today. It's right in the middle of Mallory Square and I'll tell you a little bit more about Mallory Square in a minute but it's actually the place where everyone convenes at night for the sunset Hi Rooster, for the sunset, and it's to have an entire sunset celebration. So where else but Key West can you have an entire celebration strictly set around the sun? Pretty cool. So I've been coming to Key West for probably almost 15 years and every single time I come, I instantly go into <laughs> relaxation mode. It is one of the most peaceful, relaxing cities that you're going to find and you'll see that a lot of the people here are so laid back, so just genuine down to earth people that you really can't help but have a good time. I'm still on Caroline Street. I wanted to show you the Curry Mansion Inn. It has a little bit of history with the family who built the house, but in the 1900s, the house was actually torn down by the sun and then rebuilt completely. And I believe the only thing that they kept was the fireplace. But I wanted to show you, it's just a great example of Georgian Revival architecture, and it is, you know, has some ornate features about it. It's decorated right now for, I'm not really sure what it's decorated for, but uh, if you can imagine it without all of that paraphernalia on the front. Uh, so let's take a look at that. 
Curry Mansion. William Curry is considered to be the first self-made millionaire in the state of Florida. He built his home in 1869, but in 1901, his son Milton purchased and demolished almost all but the cookhouse to construct the elaborate Georgian Revival Mansion that stands on the property today. In 1920, the house passed from the Curry family and was owned by two other families before the Amsterdam family rescued it in 1973. The once beautiful structure had fallen on hard times and was in horrible condition. The saving grace was that the house had been constructed of Dade County Pine, which we know from the history of the Audubon House has an inherent resistance to rot and insects. The home was rehabilitated and turned into a bed and breakfast in 1988 and has been continuously operating ever since. See, this is why I love Key West. So I come through the front door and the great people here at the Curry House, oh my God, told me to take the stairs up to the very top floor. Look at this. And um, there's the widow's walk up here. So I'm gonna show you what I'm looking at right now. This is crazy. Okay, guys, um, I'm kind of speechless right now. I've been coming to Key West all of these years and I've never been to what they just sent me to. So this is the Widow's Walk at the very top and I don't think I could have come at a better time. The sun is setting, it is a beautiful night. It is so, so gorgeous up here. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Um, it's breathtaking. So when you come to the Curry Mansion, talk to the amazing staff inside. They'll let you come upstairs as well. It is worth the trip up the stairs I can't even tell you I've never seen Key West from this vantage point it's it's just gorgeous look around literally a 360 view <laughs> isn't that fun see travels inspiring Okay, so this is the beauty of travel, and this is the beauty of just getting outside of your comfort zone. I walked inside, talked to Patsy. If you go here, talk to Patsy, she's amazing. And she gave me the full tour, and I got to see the house, and I got to see the rooftop, and uh, got a sticker that says I went all the way, because I went all the way to the rooftop. But just a beautiful, beautiful house. Oh, and I found out it's the Running of the Bulls. They have like this Running of the Bull in Key West where they do uh, like, like fake bulls, and they push them down the street on wheels. And I also know that Hemingway's birthday is July 2nd, so they're having the Hemingway um, look-alike contest. So I ran into probably six Hemingways <laughs> inside. Uh, one guy I said, you're gonna win. He said, I already won. I'm the judge now. So he won six years ago, but it's just so funny that they have this Hemingway contest here. But anyway, Curry Mansion, I can't say enough things about it. It is full of antiques, full of beautiful uh, artifacts from the family. And uh, I really, you really, if you, can stay here, stay here, but if you can't, at least come by and look at it and uh, draw all the way to the top. Okay, I have a quiz for you. What do deformed cats, drunk boxing, and one of the largest swimming pools ever built have in common? Why, it's Ernest Hemingway, of course. This is literally one of my favorite houses in Key West, and I wanted you to see why. Let's go. Built in the Spanish colonial style, the Hemingway home was constructed in 1851 and is made with native rock hewn from the property. The home was in horrible shape when the Hemingways bought it, but both Ernest and his then wife Pauline could appreciate the grand architecture and stateliness of the home. The massive restoration and remodeling that they undertook in the early 1930s turned the home into the National Historic Landmark that we see today. The house is also a museum and one of the most popular tourist attractions in Key West. 
But listen, don't let the crowds keep you from admiring this beautifully maintained home. There are both self-guided and guided tours, so you have your options. All right, here's that infamous pool we were talking about. It's actually not only one of the largest for the day, but one of the largest now. This thing is massive. Look at this swimming pool. Completed in 1938 at the staggering cost of $20,000, which by the way would equate to around $400,000 today. The site where the pool is located was formerly the setting of Hemingway's famous boxing ring, where he would spar with local amateur boxers, usually extra cantankerous after downing a few beers. Inside the home, the Hemingway's personal touches are in every room. Many of the unique furnishings are European antiques collected during their trips. The trophy mounts and skins were souvenirs of the Hemingway's African safaris and numerous hunting expeditions in the American West. The kitchen is still in vintage condition and set the same way that the Hemingway's would have used it. The bedroom is pretty large, but obviously still cozy enough for a nap. The one design element that I'm still enamored by every single time that I visit is the upstairs bathroom floor tile. This gorgeous motif and color palette would fill at home today on the pages of El Decor. Hemingway's writing studio is located on the second floor of the freestanding carriage house and where he wrote portions of many of his famous works, including A Farewell to Arm. Guess what? It's hot here too. Um, but I wanted to just point out the colors of this house. I think the colors are, of course, period to the time that the house was built, but these colors would work just as beautifully in today's homes. I think that this kind of citrony green feels very current, mixed with the darker green on the floor and the ceiling, and of course balanced by the white. But um, never neglect the ability to pull a color palette from a historic home. It worked 100 or so years ago, it probably will work today. Now to the cats. The property is home to approximately 60 polydactyl, which by the way means six toed cats. Cats normally have five front toes and four back toes by the way. Most of the cats on the property have extra toes on their front feet and sometimes on their back feet as well. To me, it looks like they have a thumb on their front paw. The first cat was given to Hemingway by a friend and thus the tradition began. Needless to say, the Hemingway six-toed cats know their lineage and, like most cats, could care less about how any of us feel about them. <laughs> Key West has always been this place that has given me inspiration. I kind of feel like it's my home away from home. I love it here very much and uh, just the relaxation, just the beautiful scenery. Yes, it's hot. <laughs> it's very hot. Um, but I will take that because of just the way it transports you to a different place. Okay, so this has nothing to do with architecture or houses or anything, but I did need to show you the sunset in Key West because it is the most inspirational part, I think, of the island. The beauty of nature, honestly, will just overwhelm you. And you can literally think, see the sun sinking into the ocean. If you get in a good night, you can see it melting down. Sometimes you don't get to see it because there's three clouds, but for the most part, it's always beautiful. So let's let's see what's happening. Okay, so I'm here at the Sunset Festival, and honestly, it's a festival because there's music playing, there's lots of people, but it's so beautiful, and you know, no one ever looks better than by the sun setting. The natural light is so good right now. I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you guys how beautiful this really is, and really how inspiring the sunset is here in Key West. So take a look. It's not a house, it's not a home, but it is an inspirational part of my travels, so uh, here it is. It wasn't the sunset that it normally is. It was kind of hidden by Sunset Key, which is the island right across the way. But nevertheless, it was still beautiful. 
and it was a little bit hidden, but you get the you get the idea. It is definitely worth coming down to, even if there's tons of people here, which there are. I definitely make sure you come down to Mallory Square for the Sunset Festival. It is really, really just a beautiful thing to behold, and honestly, a trip to Key West is not complete without doing a Sunset Festival. So there you go. Good night, Key West. There you have it guys, I hope you have enjoyed my architectural tour of Key West. I know that I've only barely begun to talk about all the beautiful homes here, but I do hope that you will also see some of the ways that this city inspires me and my work, and I hope that you found some inspirations to apply to your own home. Even if you just love looking at these beautiful houses and listening to their history, that alone is interesting enough. Thank you for watching subscribe below. I really appreciate you guys and stay tuned for the next video of A Beautiful Trip because it really is. <laughs>